one of the things that struck me instantly was that it was really original, had an amazing sort of energy and um, it was original because it had a take on something that's kind of familiar, uh, youth taking drugs, but the way the characters were in this book and the, the wit, the honesty um, was just so fantastic and I just thought instantly if you could transfer particularly that sort of energy about youth, which is so sort of true, to a film, you could have something really special. John goes away and writes it, then he shows it to us, then we have a meeting, we talk about it, and then he goes away and rewrites it. He gave us like 40 pages, and it included the toilet scene. And these pages sort of showed that John could, could hit the tone. I remember being in an agent's office once, and Stephen Fry was there and the agent said, what are you guys going to do next? And I said, we're going to try and do train spotting. And Stephen Fry had read that and he said he could recount the whole toilet scene from the book as a dinner party sort of anecdote. And you can imagine Stephen Fry putting on the accent. But what John did was obviously take it into that sort of fantasy land when he went down the toilet. Everything, everything that was first done was right. So everything was like that, the casting, the crewing, the choice of locations. You know, there were one or two that fell away, but everything just sort of, you know, this is partly hindsight, but that's the way it went. The whole film was edited, shot in seven and a half weeks, and the whole film was edited in two months. And that was it. It wasn't difficult to get finance for it. And the main reason why it wasn't difficult to get finance for it was because we'd had a successful film. We'd made a hit film in the UK. We went to the two people who had been responsible for our hit before, which were Polygram, who had just, who had bought Shallow Grave after Channel 4 had financed it. And, and Polygram made us an offer to fully finance it. They were a bit suspect, in fact, about the toilet scene. But basically they said, if Danny directs it, John's written the script, they'd seen that, and you get Ewan McGregor to play Renton, we'll give you two million quid or something for all the rights. And, but we also had a very, very good creative relationship with Channel 4. And we actually decided we'd make it with Channel 4, providing Channel 4 guaranteed that they would let, they would sell the film for UK theatrical and video to Polygram. When you make these kind of deals, you normally have to guarantee that it will be in colour, in English, the running length, you know, some definitions. And one of the main definition is always that it has to qualify for an 18 certificate, otherwise it can't be distributed in the UK. And we were a bit, bit worried. I certainly remember and we showed people the first sort of 10 minutes, the opening, when he's talking about heroin and choose life and that incredible speech at the beginning. And it shocked the pants off Keith Allen, Damon Albarn. And all these people said, this will never be released. They thought it was too much. But of course, they didn't see the rest of the film where it made sense, you know. I never thought it would do the numbers it did. By the time it was coming out, and when uh, Polygram films at the time, uh, you know, we'd worked on the campaign with them and they had committed to spend over half the cost of the film and the film cost 1.8 million, at, you know, whatever that is, eight years ago now. We, I knew we were going to do some numbers and you could tell from the critical reaction right from the pre first press screening that, you know, we were going to, we were going to do all right. But you never thought it would cross over, say, Shallow Grave. Shallow Grave had done five million pounds at the box office. To do five million pounds at the box office, you could, every year, still to, to this year, you know, you can name the number of British films that do that. And they start with James Bond and Harry Potter and the new working title romantic comedy. There are no other films that do five million pounds. It's a huge number to do, even right now, today. But I thought that sh we could do that. I mean, I think if you look back at the train spring reviews, you'll find they're very, very mixed. There tried to be a backlash, but um, and I think there, there, there could have been. I think there could have been quite easily, but I think because of the amount of noise we made through advertising, uh, the music, all those kind of things, uh, and, the, and the general wave of publicity, because a lot of journalists who aren't critics liked the film and wrote fantastic sort of pieces, profiles on Danny or Ewan or whatever, I think that... Um, I think it was brushed aside pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. People forget it came out the same day as Casino and Sense Sensibility. I was terrified about coming out on the same day as Casino. And I remember having lots of discussions with Polygram about whether this was a good idea. But, you know, those are three pretty high quality films on the same day. So we got often reviewed third. 
I mean, it's not really a drugs film. I think it's a film about friendship, and that's why people can relate to it. That's why I feel very sort of personally attached to the film, apart from just making it. I've never had any experience of taking heroin apart from working on that film and meeting people that had. But you feel a, a relationship with those characters because of your own friendships, very broadly. And I never had a friend like Begbie. But I had a friend kind of like Begbie, and everybody understands that, I think. Yes! It's a British version of an American teen film. It's about getting girls and getting drunk and avoiding work and all those kind of things that you do when you're that age. And, and it's expressed much more extremely in the film, but it's, you can relate to that. And I think that, 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 that's, what, that that's what makes it really connect with an audience. I think what you really remember about it is not so much the, uh, the finished film or the success that that thing is, 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 is the people that you work with and the place that you made the film. And certainly when I watched the film in advance of doing this interview, what I felt was it was, it was very personal because of um, remembering where we did it um, um, originally from Scotland, the language and stuff, just hearing that type of language. I get all nervous and I can't answer any of the questions. Like... After it had been a hit in the UK, they tested it. Miramax, who bought it for America, tested it in New York. And I remember it was so funny because they were like five Scottish guys and they all seen it and they were translating some of it for the audience. Whatever you say, man, sorry, you're the man, the dude in the chair. And it scored like fantastically well, um, particularly on the pacing, I remember. It was the first time they'd ever had a film where they said it went too quick. <laughs> at certain points. I thought it was great. <laughs> a well-known British producer told me when he was in America, he used to work for the Saturday Night Live uh, films. He worked on Wayne's World and these, these kind of films in Paramount. He worked his way up for five years and he came back to London, he moved back to London and he went to see the film and he thought the film was brilliant, but he also thought, damn it, you know, everything I've learned, everything that Hollywood or traditional filmmaking, which is great filmmaking has taught me, is not in this film. And I think that's been problematic in a funny way for us as well, um, because sometimes you do have to follow a bit more of a traditional narrative and, um, and you don't think you do because you've made train spotting. It changed our positions, you know, we all made some money out of it. We were all able to buy flats or houses. We were at that period in our life and all the rest of it. Things have just, um, things have just gone on and I think you just have to accept that. And um, sometimes you can feel you'll never get over it in terms of making a film and, you know, everybody compares it to that film. And I always think people are slightly over praise praise train spotting and under praise some of the other films and none of the other films have been as easy creatively or financially or, or anything they've all been they've all been you know relatively easy to say this is the film we want to make we've been uh, always chosen to do our own material and then to say to people this is what we want to do and we've managed to raise the money and that is a, that is because of train spotting um it says on all the posters from the director of train spotting and that it means an awful lot. I think generally when you have any kind of success and there were other successes around at the time, then it just breeds confidence in British, in, in British cinema. And I think anything, any film whatsoever that is set in Britain, that is successful outside in the world is a great thing. It definitely made Scotland together with Braveheart. It gave people an image of Scotland and it, all over the world, I don't think they'd ever really knew what it was. And on one hand, you had the sort of traditional, slightly romantic, tart and shortbread Braveheart, which I think is a fantastic film. I loved it. And then you have a sort of more contemporary, modern Scotland. And I think that together they actually gave Scotland a, a sort of correct image, if you like. Those are the two sides of Scotland and made everybody feel, you know, that it wasn't completely shite to be Scottish. Most wretched, miserable, servile, pathetic trash that was ever shined to civilization. And it was absolutely, definitely better than being English. I mean, I think one of the things I've always wanted from, from all the films is something just slightly different, something made from, a, from you know, our personal perspective, particularly the films we've made in Britain that relate to you know, a British audience and that British films can be slightly more accessible 
and 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 different. You know, the worst thing is to try and copy American films. I think you know we can be just as popular by being different.